The Stack, People, Business, Technology, with Dan Tomaszewski of Everything MSP. Welcome back to a special edition of The Stack, broadcasting from ThreatLocker's Zero Trust World 2025 in Orlando, Florida. I'm Dan Tomaszewski, and I've recently had the pleasure of interviewing Amanda Mikowski, a solutions engineer for ThreatLocker. Amanda brings a unique perspective, having previously worked for an MSP that was a partner of ThreatLocker. Her passion for finding solutions and helping partners overcome challenges is truly inspiring. Let's dive into our conversation. Here we go. Hey everybody, Dan Tomaszewski here. We are live at Zero Trust World in Orlando, Florida, and I am here with Amanda, and she is with Threat Locker. And how are you doing today? I'm doing very well, Dan. How are you? I'm doing great. It's an amazing event. Um, so much energy. There's 1,500 people at least. Uh, at least, I, yes. Well, we're right outside of one of the hacking labs right now where the rubber ducky session has taken place, and it is jam-packed. I believe there's about 600 computers in there, every oh, single yeah. one of them full, trying to learn the techniques of the what bad guys are doing with rubber duckies and how they can prevent against them in their environments. You know, that hands-on component of it really just blows me away because okay. it's, you know, completely differentiating from, you know, a lot of events where, you know, you're talking about, you know, a lot of theories. This, you're hands-on touching it live. Practice. And, you know, uh, we're big in belief. If you know how the bad guys are doing something to manipulate an environment, you know what you need to do to fix it so that they can't do it in your environment. Yeah. So that hands-on training, it's the same thing. You can talk theory all day long, but when it comes to practice, that's where the rubber meets the road, in essence, where you learn yeah. how to make it work. Absolutely. So, you know, the event is jam-packed with so much uh, education and the hands-on we're talking about. Um, before we jump in a little bit deeper, tell us a little bit more about your role at ThreatLocker. So I am a solutions engineer for ThreatLocker. And one of the primary things we do is talk to people that have never heard of ThreatLocker what, about what we are and how we can protect their environments. And then once they decide they really like that in theory, we actually take that hands-on and help them implement it into their environment. So we're there every step of the way to make sure we're adhering to best practices. We're covering those little pieces that are variables for everybody else to where we can make it to where you have a controlled list of the environment and lots and lots of visibility into what's happening. A big believer, if you don't know you've got someone attempting to start a fire, you don't know you need to go put it out. Yeah. And so if you can get that visibility into your environment and that clarity of your clients' environments, you know what you need to do to fix it so that it's clear. Um, you, it's one of the joys I have when I have partners tell me I sleep better at night knowing that my clients are protected. Yeah. It's a huge victory. So you, you offer a really unique aspect given the fact that you're a former MSP. And uh, you, you were in the business. You were a threat locker partner. Um, I, I can only imagine that that helps you in your role working for threat locker uh, um, day to day. Absolutely. The I like to say uh, MSP is a kind of a proving ground for IT professionals. You're yeah. bombarded daily with every possible scenario. So it's even you know I started out tier one help desk and work the way through. And you know, even day one tier one, you're figuring out the way an environment works. And of course, that just naturally transitioned into how can I help other people with their environments and fix it and see how it is be able to control it. It is a, a unique place because um, I've been there. I've had yeah. those end users call in. I've clicked on a link again. And right. Like you you said again in the sentence, realize <laughs> you did this wrong already once, yeah. you know, and, and being able to go take that and go, this is what a problem was when I was working for the MSP. This is how I can help you fix your problem now. Because unfortunately, we love our end users, right? right. We wouldn't be around if it wasn't yeah. for our end users, but they're also 99% of our problems most days. Right. Yeah. And I mean, the reality is we're all too quick to click, right? Yes. You know, we're moving and grooving. We're trying to get work done. Mm -hmm. um, we've got immense pressures of workloads and mistakes happen. Mm -hmm. But if there are ways to safeguard right. that client and yeah. avoid that embarrassment right. of saying, hey, guess who's calling you again? Yeah, um, which is what I love what 
threat locker is. So in essence, a zero trust endpoint protection platform. I know there was a lot of buzzwords in that statement, but we want to give you again, that visibility and that control. So for end users, right? Ransomware, malware is software. If you control what gets to execute in your environment, you're never letting that ransomware malware in. Right. And then on supplementary on top of that, my favorite piece marries perfectly with it. It's called our ring fencing, which limits what that software can do once it is up and running. Yeah. So clicking on and hyperlink in Teams, that's then going to call PowerShell to then reach out to a rogue command and control server to then pull in a malicious payload is stopped because Teams can't call PowerShell, right. right? Or any other program, PowerShell is still limited on what it can do. So we've been putting all these safeguards in place. Even if your end users click on something, there's a policy that permit prevents those malicious actions from happening in the environment. Ultimately, giving you your text time back to work on those planned upgrades, right? Your server maintenance that you want to do that you've been putting off because everybody keeps calling in with these little fires. Yep. You're not having to fight those little fires anymore. And you can actually be productive into what gets to happen in the environment instead of reactive. So it's like adding additional staff without putting them on the payroll, right? Exactly, exactly. One of the benefits with ThreatLocker is we actually consider ourselves, in, for lack of a better term, an extension of your IT team. When okay. you do sign a contract with ThreatLocker, you are uh, partnered with a technical and a non-technical resource. So your solution engineer, someone like me, there to help you make sure you're building those best practices, make sure all of the policies you're putting in place are as we expect them to be so you're as secure as possible. And then your non-technical resource just to make sure if you need any training materials, if you need any client-facing white papers, that we can get those to you so that you can implement this and give that visibility to your clients of what's going on in their environment as well. So besides some of the things that we just talked about, what are a couple things that MSPs are missing by not implementing threat locker into their stack. Okay. And, you know, uh, there's a ton of reactionary based tools, which means you're always behind that line of fire, right? There's always, there's something else that has to come up. Being able to stop that reactionary and go into a proactive state right. is massive time saving for MSPs, right? Uh, some of the other pieces of threat locker elevation control, Instead of your tech trying to go into laps or into another password manager to find a password for an end user to then run an installer that's an installer, yet you are perfectly comfortable with that end user using all the time, yeah. we can use ThreatLocker to elevate on demand. Right. It is credentialless. There is not a ThreatLocker password, and it is on demand. So anytime it is needed, yep. that application runs. So we're not elevating that end user. That end user doesn't get to do what they want to do, just that application yeah. and the files associated with it. So let's throw out um, like a scenario. You know, if I were to think about a scenario of uh, a chiropractor office where they're in there at 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. and their line of business application um, will just randomly update. Mm -hmm. You know, they have no controls over it. And the chiropractor gets in and it pops up when he gets in in the morning saying that there's a new update for the software. And of course, service level agreement is from eight to six, for example. And that chiropractor is upset and he's demanding to have administrative credentials to be able to tackle that. So how can threat locker help in that type of scenario? And that's exactly what the elevation is for. If you set it on that policy, it doesn't matter what time of day that that application wants to update. That elevation is going to say you have prior permission to run with an elevated privilege because you need it. Right. And you're not going to have to reach out to an after hours number or a call to make that happen. We have a service we provide around new installs, new applications or updates to existing applications where if a unusual thing happens, our team can actually take on that workload for oh, wow. the MSP and okay. say, this is an application that the MSP has already given us permission to update for the client. Yeah. We're going to go in there. We're going to give that end user the ability to run that application so that the MSP doesn't even have to reach out and touch it. Our goal is to respond to those in 15 minutes, but when we pull reports, we're typically five minutes or less oh, wow. responses. I mean, talk about, you know, you mentioned an extension of your team. And uh, I mean, as we all know, MSPs are strapped for time mm -hmm. and uh, the ability to have that partner, you know, in your back pocket is definitely incredible. I, I challenge all of my partners to open up a service ticket for support okay. with ThreatLocker uh, because we're we're actually very, very proud of support. We have a chat option. You're connected to a live human based out of Orlando, Florida, and their goal is to respond to those chats in under a minute. 
And routinely when we do audits, we're even under 30 seconds with that. That's amazing. And it's not a chat bot. That's a first quest. Oh yeah, you got a chat bot. No, you actually have a human there to help you because this is one of yeah. those tools that is, is so powerful that you know it's could cause a headache if it's yeah. not implemented in them properly. So that's why we're here every step of the way, not only with our support that's 24 hours a day, all day long, but you know, your solution engineer does get to sleep at night, but they're still there to help you send them an email. You yeah. know, as soon as they have time, they're going to call you, or if not, they're going to send you a message, get out, get to support right now. Right. <laughs> yeah. I, I had the, uh, you know, the pleasure of visiting your corporate office uh, last year and I, I was amazed in the support area, the dashboards and the timers mm -hmm. and the um just that emphasis on being able to you know meet and exceed those numbers yes. um i mean seeing seeing it hearing about it In and seeing it you know you, you know you're not necessarily going to visit the corporate office but if you put that support ticket in and can live it yeah that's that's it's, the big difference it is it is a massive difference and you know there, i've at the MSP, if we got next day response, we were happy, right? right and that's right. one of those things, time is money, especially for your clients, right? Yeah. I mean, not for you, it's true, but for your clients, when they are down, that is your name on the line every second they're down. So with the Cyber Hero support, you know, being that 24 hours a day when your clients are down, yeah, you are losing faith and trust. They're losing faith and trust in you for you not right. being able to respond to them. So we want you to be able to get a hold of someone immediately as soon as there's a problem because time is money for you, but time is money for your client. And yeah. if they're upset with you, you know, you're losing that faith, you're using that trust. And if it's because of our product, we don't want that for you. I mean, it's so much more than just saving you as an MSP time, mm -hmm. right? Because like you're saying, you know, you're there to serve the client, mm -hmm. you know, so it, you know, the, the client is relying on you in, you know, you, the MSP are relying on, you know, the vendor threat right. locker mm -hmm. and, um, you know, it's just all the way down the chain. Yeah, absolutely. So it's, you, a lot of our MSPs have that same mindset though. They're partnered with their clients. And yeah. so when we have that, that is your partner and where your partner, you know, that, that chain of down, just like you said, it really, those are the partners that understand and get it with threat locker just that much more, you know? Yep. So it's really nice to have that same mentality all the way through, you know, your, your trust in, in your partner's trust in you and your trust in us right. is all the way through. What's um, as we wrap up here, what's one thing that's jumped out at you um at the event whether it be something that um you know danny or rob has said on stage or any of the presenters um or maybe just a conversation that you've had with an msp there's so much hands-on learning that even people that are in that technical field and in that technical role i think the most thing that it comes away from the event is how much more hands-on they got to do okay how much more experience they got you know you hear it in theory all day long being able to get it in practice yeah and see it more and more of my partners uh, love that they can send technicians here and know that when they leave yep that they have a better understanding of the cybersecurity environment and a better understanding of how to protect their clients well you know the other thing too and i i've heard some chatter about this is that um the level of attendees ranges anywhere from you know a ceo of an msp to a technician and uh you know so the benefits are you know the same for all right uh, with the conference uh the learning event. Yeah. There are multiple different options for different classes depending on your level. Right. There are some that are purely focused more on that. Here's a higher level, more admin of your active directory environment. And here is deep dive in the weeds using yeah. exploit, using rubber duckies. Right. So that you have those concept where there, if you are that technician in the field or you're that CEO that just wants to know what the other tools are, how to implement it and yep. how your techs should be doing this thing, there's going to be information there that's viable right. for you. Awesome. Amanda, it was great speaking with you. Thank Absolutely. you so much for your time. Thank you, sir. Thank you for joining me for this insightful conversation with Amanda. 
Her enthusiasm for ThreatLocker and dedication for partner success speaks volumes about the company's culture. To learn more about ThreatLocker, you can visit ThreatLocker.com or find them on EverythingMSP.com where you can connect and schedule a demo. This concludes our special episode of The Stack. Until next time, have a great day. Thank you for listening to The Stack.